years. I had planned to bake all day today. I was like, told my family, I'm baking all day today. Um, and then, of course, it's Easter weekend. So we've been invited to see friends and the day just kind of changed. So early this morning, I mixed up some dough and my intention when I mixed this dough had been to um, bake it today without cold proofing it. But instead what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pre-shape this dough and let it rest and then put the final shape on it, get it into the bannetons and stick it in the fridge so that I don't have to worry about it over proofing while I'm out. I'll either bake it later tonight or, to or tomorrow morning. And then I'm going to mix up my bagel recipe, which is really easy. Um, the bagel recipe has an option to speed it up if you want with some um, with some um, yeast, but I'm going to do the really slow rise one today. So I'll get this sourdough pre-shaped and, and let it rest. And while it's resting, I'll mix the bagel recipe. And then once the bagel recipe is all mixed up, I'll get the sourdough into the bannetons to put into the fridge. So I'm just going to turn this over here. So when we pre-shape our bread, what we do is we start to build good tension into it. So on my channel, there's a, um, a video called Use This One Method to Guarantee Bulk Proofing Success. So you can see where I've marked my heart, my heights. Here, it's certainly not double at all. But over here, where it wasn't touching at all, it's, it's huge, right? So this dough is pretty close to double. It's starting to get bubbles on top. Now, if you were to just try to take this dough and shape it straight out of the bulk proofing container, what you'll find is that it's very sticky. In fact, when we're teaching um, on the sourdough for beginners group or anywhere, people always say, well, I did everything that you said in all of your tutorials, but then I went to work with the dough and it was so super duper sticky. So showing the pre-shaping process um, is always really beneficial for people who are trying to learn sourdough. So I'll show you. If I take this and I touch it with my hand, it sticks, right? It's super, super sticks. So Heidi says saying hello from the UK. Hi, Heidi. Glad you're here. Um, when we pre-shape our dough, we actually take a lot of that stickiness out, but we also start trapping air into our dough. So this is called building tension. So when our dough goes into the oven to bake, we want it to be full of air. And what happens when it's baking is that that air starts to pressurize and it builds up inside the skin of the dough. And then eventually from the heat, it pops, right? And that's what gives you your oven spring. That's why you see people who make sourdough putting these doughs in that are only this tall, but when they come out there, they're, they're this big sprung bread. So pre-shaping is the next step after bulk proofing is complete. And then after pre-shaping, we put the final shape on this and we move it to um, the Bannetons. Um, Diane says, hi from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Awesome. I'm in Canada. That's so cool. You guys are overseas. So if you look at this dough, it just a second ago, I dumped it out. It was kind of a blob and a bit of a mess, right? And it was also very sticky. I took my hand and I pushed it down and it stuck. I've got the dough all over my hands. By the way, I usually never do that, but watch this. Not sticking at all. So pre-shape being only takes a second, but it's really valuable. So I'm just going to let this pre-shaped dough rest for a while. It's going to start to spread out and everything else. But in a minute, when I'm done mixing the bagel dough, I'll be ready. So this dough is nicely bulk proofed. I got the dough into the bulk proofing container after I was finished stretching and folding. I marked my heights. It's certainly very close to double. It's not doubled here. Let's see. Um, hello from the White Mountains of Arizona. Oh, I'm so jealous. It's so cold here in Canada. We've got family in Lake Havasu City. We really talked about going there over the spring breaks. Didn't make it. I could really use some sunshine. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get this dough out of the bulk proofing container. And as you can see, as I'm touching it, it's very, very sticky, right? That's okay. Sourdough is supposed to be sticky. And our pre-shaping is going to help us manage that stickiness. The pre-shaping not only manages the stickiness, but also traps air inside the dough. And we need that air inside of our dough when we bake in order for the dough to spring. 
People make fun of me all the time because I pre-shape with a very dull lettuce knife. The story behind that. So normally when you pre-shape dough, you would use a bench scraper. Um, so a bench scraper is like a rectangular tool about this big. Um, they come in silicone or metal, plastic, whatever. And you would usually use that to do your pre-shaping. But when I first, first started sourdough, I had hardly any tools and no money to buy any. So I started making whatever I had around my kitchen work. Um, and so I used this for pre-shaping. I now am the happy owner of a bench scraper, but I do just find that my hand is used to using this knife. Um, but usually you would use a bench scraper for pre-shaping. People make fun of me for it all the time. Some people even get really alarmed and go, ah, you're going to cut yourself. But I'm not going to. So when I'm pre-shaping, I'm touching the dough as little as possible, right? We don't want the dough to get stuck to our hands. What we're doing is we're pushing the dough underneath itself with the knife, and we're only using our other hand to sort of push it on, right? So basically what we're doing is we're getting the dough to form underneath itself. So I'm going to just set this aside. I'm going to set these two doughs here and just let them rest for as long as it takes to get my bagel dough mixed. And then I will shape those and get them into the banneton for cold proofing. So I have this recipe. I have a couple of eBooks. I've got um, the ultimate discard recipe ebook, the essential processes ebook, which is 34 pages of just sourdough bread. Um, my newest book, the next ultimate discard recipes book is um, coming out at, towards the end of April. I've got it on pre-order. When you do the pre-order, it comes with the bagel recipe and the English muffin recipe. So I'm just going to mix it up. All you need for the bagel recipe is some sourdough starter, some water, some honey or maple syrup, some flour, and some salt. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to get this dough mixed up, go through kneading meeting it, get it prepped, and then I'm just going to let it rise because it usually takes 8 to 10 hours to rise fully when you're doing it with sourdough starter um, rather than with yeast. So here's my starter. It had been in the fridge, so this is the one that I used this morning. To mix the dough after I was done mixing it I refed it it's going to go in the fridge now at peak this one um, had been in the fridge it was looking a little lazy so I just gave it a small feed this morning to get it ready for baking the um, the bagels so for the bagels we are going to start with 100 grams of active sourdough starter so people call this a discard recipe but for anything that needs to rise, you need active starter. So as you can see, my starter's super happy and healthy. Her name's Mama. I like to think she's a little famous. So we're just going to get 100 grams of Mama um, into our bowl here. And when I fed her this time, I kept her a little bit watery just because um, bagel dough is a very stiff dough. Um, and so I like to make my starter a little bit watery just to make kneading easier with the bagel dough. Um, you can adjust your starter however you like. You can give it a flour heavy feed. You can go lighter on the flour, whatever um, you think is going to work best for whatever it is that you're going to be baking. So our next ingredient is going to be 250 grams of water. So I'm just going to tear my scale back to zero and put 250 grams of water into our bowl. Should have doubled this recipe as I'm standing here thinking about it, but that's okay. My family loves bagels. Whenever I make them, we blow through them. Got some comments coming in. Hedgehog, feed the starter. Um, can you use discard for the bagels? Diane says. And Julie says, hi from Taiwan. I'm visiting my family here. Like your live video. Awesome. Well, Julie, I'm glad you're here. Hedgehog, the starter um, has been fed. I can talk about that more if you've got some questions. Definitely post them. Diane, you can use discard for bagels, um, but you would want to add some yeast. So bagels have to rise, right? So anything that needs to rise, any form of bread, so usually like sandwich bread, bagels, um, uh, anyhow, any recipe that you would use that calls for a rise period, the discard might make it rise, but depending on how old the discard is, 
So if you wanted to use that sourdough discard in bagels and get that sourdough flavor, you could. But I would just say add um, seven or eight grams of um, quick white quick rise yeast to it to get it to rise. Um, but that's also, you can make this exact recipe that I'm making right now, but add seven or eight grams of quick rise yeast to it just to make it go faster. So this bagel recipe calls for an eight to 10 hour rise. But if you wanted your bagels a little bit quicker, um, then you could just add um, some yeast to it and then they'll rise in an hour or two. So my recipe calls for 40 grams of honey or maple syrup. You can use either. Um, I'm Canadian and so we're maple syrup people. So this is just like pure um, maple syrup. It's here in abundance in Canada. All right, I think we're good. Perfect, okay. Sorry guys, something weird happened with my headphones there, but I think we're okay. So I was saying we're going to add 40 grams of maple syrup. So what I did was I put my starter into the bowl and then I added my water. I whisked them together. Now I'm going to add 40 grams of maple syrup. So most bagel recipes call for some sort of sugar. Some call for maple syrup. Some call for honey, brown sugar, white sugar. You really could use any ones that you wanted. I just like maple syrup. Um, major pizza dough last week and it was wow just wow best ever oh good Diane I'm glad the secret with my pizza dough is the uh, garlic and basil I put garlic and basil right into the dough right from the beginning when we mix it and mm, it's really good um, that recipe is on the YouTube page so oh and by the way if you're wanting to get that ebook the new ebook the pre-order it's linked in the description of this video so next, we are going to add 500 grams of flour and 10 grams of salt. So uh, my flour bag is almost empty, so I'm just going to tear my scale back to zero, and I'm just going to dump the flour in. It's kind of messy, but I'm going to make a mess here when I shape my dough, my sourdough for the bannetons anyway. So I'm just going to get 500 grams of flour in here, and then I'm going to get 10 grams of salt in here. So I'll just tear back to zero. And I'm just using like Himalayan pink sea salt. Five, seven, eight, nine, ten, perfect. Okay. So I'm just gonna get a spoon and I'm going to start mixing this. Bagel dough is very stiff. Um Especially when you're trying to knead it, it's a it's a stiff, hard dough. So when you're mixing it, you might think that it seems a little dry, etc. But once you've let it rise, so with bagel dough, what we do is we let it rise until it's completely doubled, maybe even a little bit more. And then after that, we shape our bagels and then we let them rise again. And then after they've risen a second time, we give them their water bath and bake them. Um, so if you want to get that sort of hard bagel um, texture that you're used to, the dough needs to be really stiff. So what I do is I just use a spoon at first until most of the flour is sucked up by the water. And then I just dump sort of the whole shaggy mess out onto the counter and knead it like traditional bread. So usually with sourdough, you can't knead it. This is why we stretch and fold. Um, but because bagel dough is so stiff, like you can see, it looks very dry. Um, you can actually knead it like regular bread. So what I'm gonna do is just clean this spoon off as best I can. Try not to waste any doughs. We love our doughs. So I'm just going to tip this dough out onto the counter and sort of scrape any excess that's left in the bowl out. And don't worry that it's like kind of crumbly here. I'll tilt this down a little more so you can see better. So like this, there we go. So I'm just gonna kind of get as much of this dry flour that's in my bowl out and onto my dough. So you can see it's very crumbly. It hasn't come together yet. So bagel dough, whether it's sourdough or not, needs a really good um, knead, similar to the kind of knead that you would give traditional bread. 
dropping stuff all over the floor. Believe it or not, I did just clean this kitchen this morning. So now what I'm going to do is just knead this bagel dough the same way you would with traditional bread. You shouldn't need to add flour here, but if your dough starts sticking to the counter, um, you can add a little bit of flour because we don't want it to stick. Um, we do want it to be a heavy, thick dough, but it should be a dry enough dough that um, it doesn't, it's not sticky. It should be elastic. Um, it should, it should be well blended. There should be a good gluten structure in it, but it shouldn't be sticking. So we're just going to do this. And so then what's going to happen with these bagels or this is that these are going to go into um, a container. I'm going to let them fully double with bagels, maybe even a little bit past double, get nice and big. That's probably going to take around eight to 10 hours. And then once that's done in my kitchen, it's usually eight. Um, once that's done, I'm going to separate the dough into my bagels. There's a couple of different ways you can do them. If you've got a scale, use a scale to make sure that your portions are all the same size. You can choose to make eight or 10 or 12, depending on the size of the bagels that you want, but get them separated into equal portions. And then all I do is I actually just take my hand like a cup like this and roll them into nice, perfectly shaped balls. And then I just take my two fingers and push down in the middle and, and sort of break through and make a hole. And then I just stretch them. Then what I'll do is once they're shaped like bagels, I'll sit them on parchment paper on a cookie tray and just loosely cover them with some plastic wrap and let them almost completely double again, let them get Puffy is the word I use. I know it's very technical. Um, let's see if there's any more comments coming in. Good. So we'll just knead this. And then once I'm done getting this bagel dough kneaded, I'll get it into a container, pop some plastic wrap on it, set it aside, and then we'll shape um, these sourdough loaves and get them put in the banneton. So here we go. Bagels. My daughter loves bagels. My husband loves bagels. I started this. I wasn't thinking it's been a bit since I made them. I always double this recipe. You can just straight up double it um, because we go through them. These actually freeze beautifully. So once you've got your bagels cooked, once they're fully um, fully thawed, I actually just stack them into a big Ziploc bag sort of on their end. And then my daughter, so I only keep two or three out, just what we're going to eat over the next day or two. And then I put them all in the freezer. And then my daughter just opens the Ziploc bag, takes one bagel out, you know, puts it in the microwave for 10 seconds until it's thawed just enough to cut. And then she toasts it. So that's how we keep these going. So normally... I make um, 20 bagels. So the recipe that's in my book says that you can split this into eight to 10 equal size portions. I usually do 10 and then I do a double batch. So I end up with 20 bagels all together. Now, when we do our water bath, um, it's a good idea to use the same sugar that you used in your bagel dough in your water bath. So I'll take my pan and put, I don't know, two to three tablespoons of maple syrup in with the eight cups of water. And I'll bring that to a full rolling boil. And then once it's boiling, I'll turn it down till it's just simmering. So lots of bubbles, but um, just simmering away. And then at that point, I will um, drop the bagels in. And I do, I just use like a slotted spoon like this. And I put them in for a minute on each side. So normally when you're kneading a dough, you want to knead it until it starts to become really smooth, pliable. It should be elastic. It's starting to almost naturally form into a ball by itself. It's very stiff. I'm getting a good workout here. <laughs> People always ask me, how do you stay so thin when you make so much bread? I A, give a lot of bread away. B, I find that sourdough is just healthier and I don't find that I put that much weight on when I eat sourdough and we eat it every single day. Um, but C, there's a lot of work that goes into making these breads and 
setting everything up for tutorials and everything else. So maybe that's what's contributing to it. So I'm just going to grab a bowl to put this in. Which one do I want? So I'm just going to take this dough like this. And I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil, not a lot, just a little, and just put some in the container here. Take my dough and sort of coat it in the olive oil just so it doesn't stick to the container. Set that in there like that. And I'm just going to rinse my hands. Bear with me. Nice oily olive oil hands keeps my skin soft, working with all that dough all the time. And I'm just going to put some plastic wrap on this and set it aside to double. I keep everything just next to my stove here because this is like a nice cozy, not too hot, not too cold spot for all of my doughs. All right. So now I'm going to appreciate my bread and get it into the Bannetons to cold proof. And then I'm going to wrap up for today and go visit my friends. Probably leaving in an hour or so. So I am going to take some flour and heavily flour these Bannetons. I mean like a lot. These are silicone Bannetons. I got them off Amazon. Um, I'll make a post in the comments afterwards, um, a link to them. They work great. They're neither better nor worse than regular Bannetons, um, but I do find that they really need a lot of flour, especially pushed down into the, um, the dents that are in this thing. So usually what I do is I just flour the Bannetin and keep it really well floured. And then I just dumped the flour that was in the bantanet on the counter and used that for shaping. So I'll do a bowl shape and a batard shape today, and I'll get these covered up. And then these can sit in the fridge for anywhere from a few hours all the way up to 24, 48 hours. So it's going to buy me some time because my baking day turned into a visiting day. So. My dough has been pre-shaped. It's not sticky anymore. It's got nice tension in it. Now I'm going to get it shaped. So I'm going to take my dough. I'm going to lift it straight up and I'm going to flip it. This side's going to be very sticky, right? The top side isn't because it's got that skin on it that we made when we pre-shaped. I'm just going to slightly stretch out my dough into almost like a square shape. And then I'm going to make a pamphlet. So I'm going to fold the top third down and the bottom third up. And then I'm going to tuck my ends like this, turn it, and as I roll, I'm just going to put a slight stretch on like this. So here we go. Got a nice batard shape happening here. So I'm just going to try and pinch my ends closed a little. So I find that when I sew, so you may have seen videos where people sew up their bread. Um, a lot of times those videos are edited. Usually if you're going to sew up your bread, you need to actually like hold it for a sec. So right now I'm just closing up the ends of my dough where sort of the roll was sticking out. And I find that if I want it to stay, I have to just hold it for a sec with my thumb. Just rest like this and sort of get it to fuse. So I'm going to take my dough. I'm going to flip it over and I'll put it seam side up into my banneton. And then I'm just going to sew this bread up. So just grab one side, grab the other, sort of flip them over each other. And like I said, sometimes you kind of have to hold it, right? So sew this one like this. And I just hold my hand there until it fuses itself and decides to stay. Perfect. Beauty. Okay. So now I'll set this aside just for a second. I'm going to cover it. So now I'll make a nice spool. So same thing. I'm just going to grab this dough, pull it straight up, flip it over onto my floured counter, get it stretched out into a nice square shape. See that okay? There we go. 
make a pamphlet. Fold the top third down, the bottom third up. Now this one's going to be a bool shape. So with bools, what I do is I bring the corners in like this, and then I roll it together. But then what I do is use my hands to shape the corners under itself into a circular shape like this. And then I'm going to take my banners in, flip it upside down, put it in seam side up, and then same thing with this one. Just going to sew those edges up a little. You know, we're working not to, to force the air out of it. We want to keep the air inside of it. So when you sew up your dough like this, it just builds a little bit more tension, traps a little bit more air in there. So there we go. So with my round one, I have this nice handy dandy shower cap. And I'll just sort of pop that on there. And then with my rectangular one, I just use a plastic bag. Bear with me for a second while I find one. I actually think I'm low on them. Oh, here, this will work. Okay. So with this one, I'm just going to take this plastic bag, pop it on top it under and then we're good to go so I'm going to put um, these two sourdough loaves in the fridge I'll probably bake them either later tonight depending on what time we get home or first thing tomorrow morning um, and then my bagel dough I'm going to leave sitting on the counter to rise um, I'm not super concerned with the bagel dough if it overproofs like even if we end up being gone um, like we might not get home until nine or 10 o'clock tonight, depending on what goes on with our friend's house. And that's, um, it's one o'clock here. So that's eight, nine hours. If the bagel dough overproofs a little bit, I mean, you don't want to let it overproof too much, but bagel dough, we really want it to rise. It's quite a stiff dough, um, really high flour content to quite low water content. So I'm not as concerned about it. Whereas with the sourdough, I baked it very early this morning, or sorry, mixed it early this morning and got it ready to bulk proof, thinking that I was going to bake it today around two or three. As soon as I realized that I was going to be out at that time, that's when I made the decision to prep it for cold proofing. So I hope this was helpful today. And if you ever have any questions, you can always find me. Just comment on any of my videos. Um, come find me on Facebook at Sarah or at Sourdough for Beginners or on Instagram at Sarah Sourdough for Beginners. And I appreciate you all being here. I'll talk to you soon. How do I end this? Cancel. I would like to say talk to you soon, but... Um, how long do you need the dough first, please? Oh, Diane, sorry about that. Um, with the sourdough, um, sorry, with the bagels, five, six minutes at minimum. You want to knead that dough um, for your bagels until it's nice and smooth. It usually takes usually takes about five minutes. The recipe says between six and eight minutes. Um, but what you really want is to see the dough get into a nice ball shape and get nice and smooth. So there we go. Heidi says, thank you. You're welcome. I would already be gone, but I can't remember how to end a live on YouTube. How do I do this? Oh, I see. I found it. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks for being here.